Welcome to our weekly Forex forecast, and this is our first one of the year here. Happy New Year. So this is for a trading for the week of January 6th to the 10th, 2020. Just a quick disclaimer here before we get started. This is for educational purposes only. Trading is a risky business, so please be careful with your money. All right, so as usual, we'll start off by taking a look at our calendar, first of all. Um, so here, um, before we dive into the news that's coming out this week, we have something very important that's going on um, and it is going to have a major impact on the markets. And that is the escalation of the, um, the Iran, basically, um, as you may recall from last year, there were tensions between U.S. and Iran and U.S. had imposed san sanctions on Iran and those are actually not very good for Iran. Iran has been facing a lot of problems as a result of that. So on the, so there were some, um, there were, there was an attack on U.S. embassy as a result of that U.S. retaliated and they um, bombed um, a convoy and one of the main commanders in the um, in the Iranian army was actually um, actually uh, was assassinated as a result of that. So and that has really caused uh, um, a big problems or it has caused a big problem. Uh, Iranians have actually um, they have promised retaliation as a result of that. U.S. has been moving troops. Um, in the into the Middle East, there were I think about 3,500 more soldiers that um, were sent out, um, and now today we see that Iraq actually um, Parliament passed a resolution. I highly recommend you go check out this uh, piece of news that we have here. So Iraqi Parliament uh, passes resolution calling on the government to end foreign troop presence. So the soldiers that are going um, are actually, the U.S. soldiers are going to Kuwait in Iraq. And um, if Iraqi parliament is passing this resolution to not have foreign troops um, in their country, that is going to cause problems for the U.S. So overall, we are seeing escalation of the problems here. Um, now, I may not have said everything 100% correct. So I do suggest you check it out and read the stories for yourself so you can follow along um, and see what's going on. Um, now, well, how does that impact the markets? So we saw that as a result of the, uh, the bomb bombing of the convoy, um, we did see we did see a rise in Japanese yen. So when there is a political unrest or threats of war or anything like that, the safe haven assets tend to go up. So Japanese yen, Swiss franc, these are both safe haven um, currencies for us as forex traders. And then we have gold, silver, bonds. Those are all safe haven assets. But we did see that Japanese yen and Swiss franc both went up as a result of that. Now, if there is further escalation and we see um, we see more stories around this that are troublesome. That means that Japanese yen and Swiss franc are likely to do well, which means the, the yen crosses and Swiss franc crosses are likely to drop. So, um, so that's sort of the overall picture of what's going on. So let's dive into our... Uh, our economic calendar here. So in terms of the news here, we do have um, final manufacturing PMI numbers out of Japan. So if these are below the previous numbers here, we are likely to see Japanese yen drop as a result if they are uh, below expectation or below the previous numbers here. So keep an eye on that. We also have PMI numbers out of China. So if these PMI numbers, um, if they are higher than expected here, we could see um, Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar go up as a result. So another thing to keep an eye on. Uh, we do have a bunch of PMI numbers coming up for Eurozone um, on Monday here. Again, PMI numbers are important because they're leading, um, it's a leading indicator in terms of fundamentals uh, for our retail sales, GDP, and all of those. So PMI numbers are important. So uh, keep an eye on these. Positive numbers will be uh, good for the euro, and negative numbers here or drop from the previous numbers will be bad for the euro. On Tuesday here, we do have CPI 
um, here year over year flash estimate. CPI is inflation. It's one of the numbers that the central banks look at. So again, an important number. Um, if it's not in line with the expectations here, if it drops, then that will be negative for the euro. On, um, on Tuesday here, we also have ISM non-manufacturing PMI numbers for the U.S. The numbers that came out last week were actually below expectations. So we did see on Friday that um, U.S. dollar took a hit um, after these numbers came out. So if these numbers are also uh, below expectations, then it will cause a further drop in U.S. dollar, which means the dollar crosses are likely to go up um, under those circumstances. We also have building approval numbers here for Australia. Um, and same thing applies, any drop in the numbers will be negative for Australia. And this is also our uh, non-farm payroll week. So it will be a volatile, um, at least going into the later part of the week, will be volatile for the US dollar. We have ADP non-farm employment numbers. So if these come in below what, is expected here, we are likely to see a drop in the US dollar. Um, these are seen as precursors to non-farm payroll numbers, which come out on Friday. So these, these come out on Wednesday. So if they are below expectations, we will see a drop in the US dollar. Trade balance numbers here, there's, there has been a lot of focus on trade. And as a result of that, um, if we see, so these numbers have become more important as a result. So if these numbers come in below the expected number here, we are likely to see a drop. On the flip side though, if they come in below, ex above expectation, sorry, that will cause Australian dollar to go up. And then on Thursday here, we have Bank of Canada, Governor Pola speaking. At this point, um, now that we are into 2020, um, focus will again be on central banks to see what they are looking to do. So the Fed has been uh, putting in a lot of liquidity into the market. We have seen equity markets go up as a result of the additional liquidity that, um, that the Fed is putting in. So if uh, we see a similar theme from all the other central banks as well, more in terms of cutting rates, uh, putting liquidity into the market, all of those things will be negative for those currencies. So again, the, central, the focus on central bank will become important. So anything the central banks say at this point, we have to pay attention to. So if there is any indication of Bank of Canada cutting rates or them being concerned about the economy, that will cause Canadian dollar to drop. Retail sales numbers here for Australia, same thing applies. If they are in line with expectations, we're not likely to see um, a big move here. But if they either exceed the expectations or if uh, they are below expectations, then we're likely to see uh, we're likely to see uh, in re reaction as a result of that. Sorry, I'm a little rusty in doing these calls. Okay, Friday here. This is the big day for U.S. dollar. Here we have non-farm employment numbers. This is a, one of the uh, data points that is market moving for the U.S. dollar. So if the two Two numbers we have to pay attention to. One is average hourly earnings and the second one is non-farm employment number. So if either one of these numbers are below expectations, then we could see the US dollar drop as a result of that. At the same time, we also have Canadian numbers here, employment numbers, same thing. Employment numbers are very, very important at this point because if the employment drops, it does put pressure on the the reserve bank or central bank to actually do something about the economy and if the numbers are without expectations here so we're likely to see canadian dollar drop as a result of that so keep that in mind if you are trading dollar cad keep in mind both of those currencies are going to have an impact on that pair so this could be a particularly volatile time if you're trading dollar cad all right, so that's it in terms of overall what's going on in the market as well as the data that's coming out this week. So let's move on to our charts here. We'll start with dollar, with euro dollar as usual here. And here we see that price went into the resistance all the way into this resistance at 1.1240 here. 
and then we have seen a drop here. So at this point, a bias is to the downside here. And let's take a look at, um, so the, the bias is to the downside. And in terms of the move, this is sort of what I'm looking for here. Um, we could get a pullback here, potentially into 1.1120, and then a further drop target here is 1.1065. So bias is to the downside for Euro dollar. Pound dollar here, this one as well, we have a pin bar here and we see a rejection here from this resistance and we have a lower high here. So bias here is also to the downside. Again, watch out for pullbacks here, we have had um, quite a bit of a move here in the last couple of days. So watch out for the pullback and then a drop. So biases again to the downside. Um, nice pin bar here. I do like it. And in this case, a pullback, potential pullback into 1.3170 and then looking for a drop into 1.2900. So bearish bias for pound dollar. Aussie dollar here, this one also rejected this resistance and we have seen a drop. Now it is into support, so keep that in mind. We are right into support there. So if it doesn't go through the support, it could still go higher. So watch out for that. But overall, the bias is to the downside. And in terms of the target here, the target would be 0 0.683. Uh, sorry, 0 0.6840. So bias is bearish and um, 0 0.6830, or sorry, 40 is the target, and then 0 0.6760 is the second target here. Bearish bias for Aussie dollar as well. New Zealand dollar here, this one is also looking bearish. We see price went into the resistance, and now we have a bearish candle close here. So looking for a further drop here. Keep in mind though, this is also into support here. And if it doesn't break through 0 0.6635 here, it could again go back up towards the high here. So keep that in mind. But overall bias is to the downside and the move that I would look for here would be a pullback and then a drop here. So target is 0 0.6550, potential pullback into 0 0.6700 and then a drop here. First target 0 0.6550, second target 0 0.6430. So bias is bearish for New Zealand dollar as well. Dollar CAD here, this one has dropped a fair bit here. Now we are into support. Uh, we do have a bearish candle close, but I would be careful with this one. So if the US dollar strengthens, and that tends to happen uh, during uh, these times of political unrest. Now, if the US dollar strengthens, then we are likely to see this one go back up. So it is into support at the moment. So I'm gonna say bearish bias, but I would be careful because if it doesn't break the support, I will look for it to go back up. So this is sort of what I'm looking at. I will look for a retest of the low at 1.2950. If it doesn't go through, we're looking for a further move back to the upside. But should it drop, we do have the next level here at 1.2880. So we have employment numbers both from US and Canada um, coming out this week. So keep an eye on this. This one could be a little bit volatile based on that. Euro pound here, this one has been going back and forth, hasn't really done anything. We have a, a doji here, we do see a rejection from the bottom, but at this point, um, it is neutral. This one could go in either direction, so my bias here is neutral, uh, probably not the, uh, my best or not my favorite one to trade this week, uh, so keep an eye on it um, in that sense, if there's a setup that shows up, for now though, I am a neutral on this and I would just look for price to basically trade between 0 0.8600 and then between 0 0.8450. So just looking for a sideways move here. So neutral bias for Euro pound. Euro Swiss franc here, we do have um, bearish candle close here. So bias is to the downside and 
our next target here is 1.0780. And then if we see a further drop, 1.0720. 1 so bias is bearish here for Euro Swiss franc. Now, just keep in mind that this one is into support here as well. So if it doesn't break through, again, it could just go sideways here. So that's something to watch out for because as we can see, when price came here, it just bounced back up and then it traded in this range for quite some time here. And now it's testing the bottom of this range once again. If it doesn't break through, this one could go back up. But for now, um, biases to the downside. So in order to trade this, we do need to see a break first before uh, looking for a further move to the downside. But bias is bearish for Euro Swiss franc. Pound Swiss franc, this one is bearish as well. We have a nice pin bar here. So looking for price to draw further. Just keep in mind again with this one as well, prices into support. So as we can see, it struggled with this level a fair bit before it moved back up or before it moved up further. So now we are back into the same place. And if it doesn't break the support, it can go back up. The bias is bearish. There's a nice pin bar. So looking for it to drop further. 1.2520 is the first target. 1.2400 is the second target. So bias is bearish for pound Swiss franc. Dollar Swiss franc here. This one um, may not be the best one to trade here just because Swiss franc is strong and so is US dollar. Um, so here we see a rejection from the support here. Um, and that means that we could see price go up higher. So I would look for a retest here and then potentially a move higher. But for now, I am neutral on this pair. Again, not my favorite one to trade for this week. All right, so now let's go on to the yen crosses. Uh, we did see um, some good moves here in the yen crosses. Uh, now we do have a bearish candle close here for pound yen. Keep in mind though, it is into support and it struggled with this level a lot previously as well. So we could see that some more of that struggle, but overall biases to the downside, we have a nice a bearish candle close. So we do need to see a, uh, basically a, a drop through that level and then a further move to the downside. So bias is bearish. Target here is 139. So bias is bearish for pound yen. Euro yen here, same thing. We have seen a big move to the downside. A lot of that had to do with the political issues that are going on right now. And if we see more of an escalation in those, we're likely to see a further drop here. So bias here is bearish. And next target is 119.20. And then below that, we are looking at 117.50. So bearish bias here, um, actually we can say 118.50. So bearish bias here, um, but keep an eye on, on the news to see what's going on in the Middle East. And if there are further escalations, I do expect yen crosses to drop further. Um, but keep in mind, when we see these type of things, quick moves in any direction, there can be pullbacks and retracements. So um, if you're taking trades in the yen crosses, just keep in mind the retracements um, and um, again, trade accordingly. Dollar yen here, this one is a bearish here as well. We see a big drop here. Now, this one is also into support. So just be mindful of the support here. Bias is bearish, potential pullback into 108.50, and then a further move to the downside here. Uh, target is 106.60. So bearish bias for, for our dollar yen as well. Aussie yen, same thing here. We saw a big drop here in um, Aussie yen because of the news. Now it is into support, so watch out for pullbacks here. Potential pullback into 75.65 and then looking for a drop. So bias is to the downside. 73.80 is the first target and 73 is the second target. So bearish bias here for Aussie yen as well. 
New Zealand yen here, this one had a nice drop here. And let me just get rid of my trend line here. Okay, so bearish bias here, a big drop at this point, looking at a further move to the downside. So bias is bearish. Now, next target would be 70.80 and then 70.20. With this one as well, we are right into support here. And when that happens, we could get pullbacks. So in this case, looking for potential pullback into 72.70 and then a further drop from there. So bias is bearish, target is 70.20. So the first target is, actually let's just keep it at 70.20. So bias is bearish for New Zealand yen as well. Now with all the yen crosses, one thing to keep in mind is if let's say they reach an agreement, so Iran and US, they reach an agreement and then they cease fire, that would be, um, that will be positive for the risk currency. So Euro, pound, all of these, we're likely to see those go up and we could see the yen crosses go in the opposite direction. So this is why it's very important at this moment to keep a close eye on the news. So we don't care so much about the opinions, but we care about what the actual news is, what are the steps that are, are what are the things that are really going on um, in terms of the, the escalation or potential war. Okay, so back to the CAD yen here. This is bearish as well. We see that price has dropped. Again, it is into support. So we could get a pullback here and a potential pullback into 83.40 and then looking for a drop. We do need to see a break of the support for this one to continue further as well. Target here is 81.70. So bias is bearish for CAD yen. All right, so let's go on to our commodities now. We'll start off with silver. So silver, we see that price um, has gone up, but it, it's into resistance at this moment, and we see a drop. So looking at the daily, we do see a pin bar here. So we could see a drop for silver here. So watch out for a bit of a move back up and a drop. But overall though, from weekly perspective, this is looking still looking bullish here. So we could see a bit, bit of a pullback back into 17.80 here. And if it holds above that, then we can see a further move to the upside. So watch out for that there. Um, but we do have a big move to the upside here for silver now. And if it breaks through the resistance here, then we have more room uh, for this one to go higher. So for now, I will look for pullback into 17.80. And if it holds above, looking for a retest of 18.25 um, there. So for now, bias is neutral to bullish for silver. Gold here has gone up. So like I mentioned, all the safe haven assets have gone up. Um, gold looking very strong right now, but because we have seen this uh, big strength here, watch out for pullbacks. So we could see a drop here before it continues further and we need to zoom out here. So it's right into, <laughs> excuse me. So this is right into the top of that range that it's been trading on, uh, trading in for quite some time and we are right into this um, support turning into resistance here. So um, basically what that means is that we could see price come back into the range. Now, if we see further escalations, um, that is likely to push the price up for gold. And from a longer term perspective, what we could expect is a move like this. So this is our flag formation here. And if it holds above this 1450, we could expect a move back up towards that support resistance level at 1800. So gold could go up higher, especially with the escalation. But for that to happen, there is some time for that to happen here. This is more of a broader, bigger uh, picture scenario. So going back to our closer, 
um, here support resistance. This is the range it's been trading in. As we can see, it's back into towards the top of the range. And in this case, what I would look for is a pullback here. All right, so gold, we are into the resistance. So in terms of um, what am I expecting here, I will look for a pullback potentially into 1536. And then if it holds above 1536, this one could go up further or we could get a deeper pullback into 1510. And then if it holds above that level here, I will look for a further move to the um, to the upside there. So as long overall though, as long as it holds above 1450, the bias still remains to the upside in the overall picture here. Uh, so bias here overall basically bullish, looking for a pullback and then a further move to the upside. So I am bullish on oil, at, um, sorry, bullish on gold at the moment. Oil here, oil also going up. And the reason, excuse me, for oil going up is because um, Middle East, there. if there is a war, that would be bad for oil supplies because um, Middle East, of course, a big exporter of oil and then everybody is likely to feel, um, feel the, the burn of that. So that's why oil went up quite a bit here, as we can see, because of the escalation. Now, zooming out here for the oil, we see it's... Uh, pushing into 63.80 here. So overall bias is bullish here for oil, but keep in mind, we are into this resistance here. So this is an important resistance and we could see price drop. And that was quite a move there on Friday. Uh, a lot of times these moves can get filled. Uh, so keep an eye on that, but overall, bias is still bullish here. So we're looking for price to stay up, especially if there's escalation in the Middle East, that would be good for the oil because of um, threat to oil supplies. So for now, bullish bias, look for a bit of a pullback, potentially into 6150, um, but I am bullish here, but we have to see that price goes through the resistance for it to move higher. The target here is 66. Um, let me just move this lower here. So the target is uh, 66.50. So bias is bullish uh, for oil as well. Copper here, a big drop in copper. Uh, bias is bearish. Again, keep in mind, we are into support. So we do need to see a drop below. Um, 2.72 here, but next target 2.67. And then if it drops further, we're looking at 2.60. So bias is bearish for copper. Bitcoin here. Bitcoin, I have not actually, this is not the currently updated chart. It has not been updated over the weekend, but please, um, so please take a look at the weekend chart. But for now, this one is looking bullish for the day. Now it is into resistance. And one thing to say, something that I would keep an eye on here would be how Bitcoin reacts to the current political environment. So right now with the threat of war here, um, we are seeing Bitcoin move up. So lately, Bitcoin has sort of been trying to act as a safe haven asset. It's not completely there yet, but I would keep an eye on it because it will be interesting to see, does it actually fall into uh, or does it become a safe haven asset? And if it ends up becoming the safe haven asset, that means it is going to react the same way the gold would in terms of for. So um, keep an eye on this. Right now, this is looking bullish, but it is into some important support, sorry, important resistance here, support turning into resistance. So if it's not able to go through 7,400, this one could drop from here, like it has just been staying below this level, but it is bullish bias. So once we see price go through, I would look at 7865 as the next target. So this is a good support resistance level to target here. So bullish bias here for um, our Bitcoin here. Let's take a look at equity markets here. Equity markets react negatively to any kind of war situation. And that's because it is very disruptive um, for actual businesses. So in this case here, um, we see um, 
basically a neutral candle for our S&P 500, the weekly here. In this case, I would, if there's an escalation, I would look for market to drop here, essentially. So first target here is 3,200 and then 3,150 as the second target. So overall bias here is neutral, but look for that turn. And if it drops through 3,200, I'm looking at 3,150 then, and then below that 3,100. So overall um, neutral, but look for that turn to the downside for S&P 500. NASDAQ here, this one also, we saw a drop there uh, and we have a neutral bias. This one is also spinning top here. And so bias is neutral. I would look for a pullback and then a further drop here. So one of the reasons that the equity markets have been holding up um, has been due to Fed basically uh, putting liquidity into the market. They are, they are buying stuff and uh, securities, which is pushing the markets up. And um, that's what we have seen um, over the last little bit here. But with the war now or potential of war, we could see this one drop here. So I would look for a retest of 8650 first and then 8500 is the first target and then further um, 8280. So neutral bias for NASDAQ, but looking for a drop. Okay, same thing here for Dow Jones as well. We have a doji, bias is neutral. I will look for a break through the support. And if it breaks the bottom here, I'm looking for a further drop into 27,680 and then potentially into 27,000. So 27,290. So bias here is neutral. And once it breaks through the support, looking for a drop. And then we have a DAX here. For the daily here, this has just been going back and forth. And as we can see, it's kind of stuck in this range here. We do have a bearish candle close. So looking for price to drop further into 13,000. And if it drops through that, then 12,870. But for now, bias is bearish, looking for it to go towards the bottom of this range at 13,000. FTSE here, FTSE has also been uh, sideways here. Hasn't really done much. We just seen back and forth here. Um, so neutral bias here, but this one could also get pushed lower. So like I said, keep in mind the escalations. So first target here is 7530, re looking for a retest of the bottom. And only if it breaks through that would I look for next one at 7450. So right now my bias is neutral for FTSE here. Nikkei, Nikkei is looking bearish here. We have seen the turn. Oops. Um, so we have seen the turn here already. We have a bearish candle close for the week. Now look for a bit of a pullback and then looking for a further drop here. So bearish bias, looking for it to drop and target here is 22,680 as the first target. And then if it continues 22,250, but bias is bearish here for Nikkei. All right, so with that, we'll wrap it up here. If you guys would like to get the spreadsheet with all the, so if you'd like to get the spreadsheet with all the targets that I mentioned, you can go to tradingwithvenus.com forward slash forecast. Now, keep in mind, if you have already signed up once, you don't need to do it again because you will, um, you will get the email from me with the spreadsheet and the recording for this. All right, so that's it for today. Uh, make sure you keep an eye on the news. Very, very important uh, time coming up here with potential escalations. So you guys be careful with the market, but there could be some good opportunities as long as you keep in mind what we discussed here. So good luck this week. And then I will be, I actually won't be back next week, but I'll be back the following week. Okay, bye for now.